Well, hey, Merry Christmas. We are going through the Christmas story, verse by verse in Luke's account from Luke 1, 1, until Jesus is presented in the temple. And I was felt called by God to finish this before Christmas. So I'm just going to dig, 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 dig. Um, it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> so where we are is uh, the angel of the Lord had just told Mary that she is going to give birth to Yahshua and that he will redeem mankind and he will be the son of God and will reign on the throne of David forever and ever and ever. And uh, we're just going to pick it up where we left off there uh, at the end of that conversation. Uh, Luke 1, starting verse 36. Then indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I believe that has a lot to do with why Mary was chosen is because that was her attitude with God. I mean, he's Lord. But the angel told her about Elizabeth. And I want to, before we get into what Elizabeth says, and what Mary says in this next conversation, I want to remind you that John the Baptist is in Mary's womb and she is filled with spirit. Elizabeth is going to be filled with spirit a little bit. Mary is filled with the spirit. Jesus is filled with spirit. So everything that they're about to say is not two women having a conversation. It's not. It is the spirit talking through them. So we now and all humanity can see what is it the spirit had to say about this moment in time. So just keep that in mind. It's not two women talking. It is the spirit talking. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now, I just want to kind of pause there because Mary didn't tell her she was having a baby. She just walked in and Elizabeth knew all this. This is very significant because of the discern. Like this is awesome discernment through the Holy Spirit. We have to fully understand the power of communication the Spirit has with us to show us the things of God. But you have to be in tune with it. Now, Elizabeth is clearly in tune with it. She's been righteous in the eyes of God. She is beloved among the Lord. Uh, she has John the Baptist in her. John is filled with the Spirit. She is filled with the Spirit. But if you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are filled with the Spirit. And if you're filled with the Spirit, you have to, you have to know that it wants to tell you some things. So I, I, I encourage all of you, all of you, to sit there and just really, as you pray, stop and be quiet and be like, Spirit, God, what do you need me to know? And listen and believe it to be true. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. The mother of my Lord should come to me. Like you're the mother of my Lord. You have Yahshua, the son of God in your belly. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Literally, the baby is leaping for joy because he's in the presence of Joshua. This is an incredible thing. He is in the presence of Jesus and he knows it and she knows it. And she's like, ah, what is it I have done to be so blessed to be in your presence? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped to my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Um, you know, this is essentially saying, Mary, you have the Son of God in your belly. What is it I have done that I can be in your presence and just know that I believe and blessed is she, blessed are you who believe. All those things that you were told, believe those things. 
Like, could you imagine having an angel come to you and tell you some things are going to happen? And then as they begin to happen, you walk in and somebody's like, that thing is happening. You're the thing that you have going on in you. This is what's happening. And you should listen to what that angel told you. <laughs> That's an incredible confirmation of some stuff. Um, and, and it is the spirit that is showing Elizabeth this thing. And, and why is it so important that Elizabeth see this thing? So then she can help raise John the Baptist to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. She has a role in that as a mother as well. Zacharias has a role in that as well. And it is all this plain, like they're saying, okay, now we see clearly what is happening. And I understand what is going on in my womb. And I understand what is about to happen. And I will play a role as a mother of the spirit of Elijah to lead the way of the coming of our Lord. Uh, this is an incredible thing uh, spoken of by the spirit. Hey, Merry Christmas and welcome back to a series where we're going through the Christmas story verse by verse according to Luke. Luke 1.1 1, 1, through the moment that Jesus is presented to the temple. It's incredibly important to go through this. We've all been taught things that just simply aren't true about this story. So where we are is uh, Mary is visiting Elizabeth. Uh, John is in her womb, Elizabeth's womb. She, John is filled with the Spirit. Elizabeth is filled, filled with the Spirit. She then confirms some things through the Holy Spirit with Mary. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see what Mary says. And I want to remind you, like I did the last episode, this is not a conversation between two women. This is what the Spirit is saying through them. Uh, they're all, everybody present is filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're all speaking out the things of God. So uh, we're just going to pick it up where Mary begins to speak. Luke 1, starting in verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud to the imaginations of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. All right. Um, I, I kind of want to go through this conversation and the, the things that Mary said, because she's just proclaiming some things here. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit is rejoiced in God, my Savior. We need to magnify the Lord in our soul. We need to magnify the Lord in reality, outside our spirit and soul too. But we need to magnify the Lord in our soul. We have to just dig deep and magnify him internally. And, and it's important that we do this. Because you can't magnify him externally until you magnify him internally. And my spirit is rejoiced in God, my Savior. It's important we rejoice in him. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. He regards the lowly state that you're in. You have to know that. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. And we talked about that last time. Of course, she's blessed. Incredibly blessed. Giving, redeem, you know, giving birth to the redemption of mankind. Everything that the prophets talked about. Redeeming mankind, the advancement of the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven through the redemption of the Son of God. She is the one doing it. She, well, she's not doing it. It's the Holy Spirit doing it, but it, she is the one giving birth to that thing. For he has regarded the lowly save his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. Proverbs 1.1 1, 1 says the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their hearts. 
He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. You have to know that God is in the business of lifting up those who are low. He's in the business of uplifting those who are in a lowly state. He's in the business of filling the bellies of hungry people. And he is in the business of tearing down the proud. And he's in the business of tearing those who are mightier than now. He will tear them down and he will lift up. It is his business to do that, literally. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. This is an eternal thing that God is doing, and we have to see it for that. This affects us today just like it did back then. This is the same God they're talking about, and we have to fully understand that. Welcome to The Real Christmas Story, where we're going through the book of Luke verse by verse. It's incredibly important. Luke literally starts with talking about how incredibly important it is to understand the full account of all this. And we've all been taught a lot of things that just simply aren't true when it comes to the Christmas story. So I think it's incredibly important. I feel called by God to do this, and uh, but I felt called to finish it <laughs> by Christmas. It's Christmas Eve, so I'm just going to pound through it. Where we left off was Mary had just, uh, through the Spirit, talked about some realities of God in the world to us, to her, to, the, to all the mankind. And uh, we're just going to pick it up where she finished. Luke 1, starting verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. All right, I'm going to pause there real quick. Uh, we're going to continue through this, but I, I just think it's important we talk about this, that, you know, she's old. She prayed forever to give birth. This was to take away the reproach of man on her and her husband is how she looked at it. She was mostly concerned about how everybody looked at her and her husband and the dishonor in it. And they all rejoiced with her in this thing. And it's important to surround yourselves with people that rejoice in the blessings, uh, not criticize you or kind of jealousy or blessings, but rejoice with you in their blessings. Let's keep going. Now, so it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him by the name of his father, Zecharias. And his mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have called him. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue loosened and he spoke, praising God. Now, I'm going to pause right there because the angel said you're going to call him John. Um, and then because Zechariah didn't believe that he was going to have a son, the, the angel said, all right, now you're going to be mute. So this moment in time is a very significant one because they're proclaiming the things of God. They're saying, well, he's called this because that's what God said. You know, and this is incredibly important because what we have going on here is we have everybody saying, no, you can't call him John. There's nobody in your family named John. You can't name him that. And she said his name is John. They're like, well, okay, whatever, woman. Let's see what your husband has to say. And they gave him something to write with. And he said, his name is John. And then immediately that, I mean, I don't want to cause it a curse, but that consequence of, you know, was then taken away because it was a sign to say, I, I hear the pressure of the world. I hear it. But it's important that we do what God said to do. His name is John. Then fear came on all who dwelled around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. You know, this is something we don't talk about in the Christmas story is what's going on with John. Like, John played a huge role in this. And, you know, why was John who he was? He paved the way for the Lord Jesus Christ and was beheaded for it. So what was it about him that did this? And all these things that took place with Elizabeth and Zacharias 
because she hid herself for the first five months. But then after Mary, she then revealed herself after that. And finally, she's giving birth and everybody is marveling at all these things because they've been told these things. Meanwhile, Zacharias can't talk. And all of a sudden, boom, we reveal what God said and now I can talk. So, of course, they marveled. But not only that, fear came on all of them who dwelt around them. And then throughout all of the hills of Judea, people heard, like, what kind of man is this son going to be? Like, what is this? There was a, they believed it. They heard it. And they believed it. And they feared it. And they, the rumors spread of who this was. What's going on with that priest Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth? Uh, this is incredibly important because it also fulfills, you know, uh, or not fulfills, but reveals God's plan to others. All right, let's keep going. Now, his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, all right, now, last time, okay, Elizabeth was filled with the Spirit and she spoke. Mary was filled with the Spirit and she spoke. Now, Zacharias is filled with the Spirit. He spoke. So what we're dealing with is we're dealing with three different parents. We're dealing with the mother and father of John. They're all being filled with the Spirit. They're all causing these things to take place through the Spirit. Mary is filled with the Spirit. She's proclaiming some things and some prophecies. And all of this is done through the Spirit. And so all these people are playing a critical role in the birth and redemption of mankind through Jesus Christ. So what does, he, what does the Spirit say through him? Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord and prepare his ways. It, it's beautiful how a mother filled with the Spirit and a father filled with the Spirit and a son filled with the Spirit can then guide that son to a destiny ordained by God. Like, who does that? You know, I know we all desire to do this, but when you, you know, this is what family does when they're involved deeply with God and revolve every, like, his name is John, was what he said. Like, like, I don't care what you say. God said, name him John. His name is John. Here's what he's going to do. And then he's filled with the Spirit. And he starts proclaiming prophecy about not what the prophets foretold, as well as what then is taking place through John. Let's keep going. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So this is ultimately him saying that, you know, John is born specifically to give knowledge of salvation to his people by remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God with which the day springs from on the high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is what John is ordained to do. Like he was literally born to do this thing. He was in his mother's womb to do this thing. And his parents filled with the Spirit, him filled with the Spirit, is doing this thing, is guiding their child into this thing. So the child grew and became strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. So he literally grew and just hung out in the wilderness 
the whole time preparing for this thing. You know, it's, it's important as parents we realize you're redeemed with the body of Jesus Christ. You're filled with spirit. What is that spirit telling you to do for your child? Do that thing.